you say you're running for a, a center. Come on, over. Oh. See how much I know about cameras? I'm thinking it's six this way. Let me hold. This is a new day. This is a new day. We're trying to push this to be Okay, Zachariah Jackson, Bastard News, downtown on Rector Street and McCarter Highway. We're talking to who? Vivian Sana, who is running for Senate. Senate New Jersey. Well, I said Senate. Senate. <laughs> and you run against uh, Bob Mendez and Bob Hubie. Yeah. Okay. And tell us what motivates you to run. Well, we don't want to go to the Democratic Party. We just hope the party has a chance to do it. Okay. We need to have a labor party. We need our vote. We need our vote. We think we need to have a political party that's for working people. It's one of the ways that we can unite. You know, we can have a way to exchange ideas, uh, plan, make plans. Uh, for example, like this. This is an important issue. Sure, uh, sure. We have ongoing cases of political power. Let me ask you this right here. Now, I'm waiting on Chairman Ham also to talk to him. What do you think when you look at the nation and you see police brutality, as you seen the other day, on, I don't know whether you looked at it, a young girl down in Florida, 14 year old, being punched in the side by a police officer. What is this really all about? Well, I think it's an attack on working people, which they always direct uh, this towards the federal expense of the line. But I think it's a lesson for all working people. Sure. We're Sure. Uh, any other social protest that we try to do well, not to go back to, you know, really defend our class in the Okay, uh, okay. And tell me a little bit about your party so we can be clear and uh, people know how to vote uh, 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 next month on uh, November 6th. Okay, my campaign is the writing campaign in New Jersey. Okay. Um, and so you will write in my name with what the choice for this party. Uh, well, basically, oh, the history, the, the history of your party, oh. and, and, oh, and, and who are you, you know, that you lead? The, uh, the party is just, has a long time, going back to, really, the Russian Revolution, okay. uh, learning from the history of the Russian Revolution, and the people in Russia to the state power for the first time showing that the class is capable of being carried on so you'll follow your party like like Lenin? Yeah. 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 Lenin. Oh, okay. Uh, Castro. We think that's a real example. It's a small island, doesn't have a lot of resources, and yet we have a but can we do that in America? Can we actually build a party like that in America that's going to be able to uh, stand firm against the Republican Party or the Democratic Party? Because if we if we elect you in there, you got to deal with these guys, you know. So there's no need of us acting like that with the fact. An election like that isn't going to change. Uh, what's going to change it is uh, a movement. They always underestimate. Sure. They, uh, they did not think anybody was capable of carrying out the civil rights movement sure, and sure. bringing down Jim Crow. Yeah. Who are these people from nowhere? Exactly. Well, they're just like us. Uh, and we, in our country, produce leaders and will continue to produce leaders like Malcolm X. Sure, who, sure. Who resolutely stood, understood you have to speak for yourself, defend yourself, that no one else is Sure, sure, sure. And that's one of the reasons that we should have a party. We can't be able to fight for the real union. Okay. And our interests. And, and look back, you do study that in the U.S. history. You know, carrying out uh, things like what was done in the 30s, where the big unions were built. There were massive strikes. There were massive strikes right here in New Jersey. But in America, we so much talk against Marxist uh, views. We talk against that, you know, uh, and things. And so, how do you how do you be able to unweave that fabric that's been sold that the Marxist views, the Lenin views, are wrong? Well, because capitalism doesn't work, and the more and more working people, the 
you if someone want to reach out to you? Uh, well, the best way is actually online. We have our newspaper, The Militant, and it has a directory in it, and it, it gives the uh, address for the Social Justice Party in, uh, what, 15, 16 states, um, and you can go online, you can find the addresses. Here's our, here's our issue for this week. Um, and that's probably the best way, uh, if you're just watching this uh, on YouTube and you want to reach us, is to go online and go to the mall. Okay, and again, you are writing, they would have to write your name in, is that correct? Yes. All right. Can you explain to them right here at this point of how that's done? Because some people have never wrote it in. Um, well, it's different in every state. Okay, the but state of New Jersey. But if you go in and you say you want to do a write in and they have a ballot, they, they do our obligation. Right. Okay. And okay. and usually they count them, uh, but like I said, our what we are running for is to have the, the voice, the interest of working people. Sure. We, we just want a way to speak out for the interest of working people. The working people today have many different ideas. Sure. Sure. I don't speak for them, right. but I speak what I think is the interest of working people and the ideas. We take this newspaper door to door in neighborhoods all over New Jersey of all kinds of incomes, all kinds of populations, and you get a key break because this is a broad thing that has come down and it's happening for quite a while. People are looking for issues. They're looking for all these Okay. All right. Well, uh, do you have an email address? Okay, Socialist Party New Jersey at gmail.com. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Zachariah Jackson, Bassett News. Goodbye. <laughs>
So we can get from Carol go first. Come on, Carol. Come on, Carol, you know who you are. <laughs> Carol Gay, New Jersey Uni uh, Industrial Union Council, and many other organizations, a proud member of POP, 
of the Green Party, yes, and um, every um, organization working for social and economic justice. Come on, step up. I'm Diane Beeney. I'm the chair of Union County Peace Council. I also worked with a, a longtime member of New Jersey Peace Action before it was even Peace Action. It was New Jersey Sane, and a longtime member of, of, of Pop and other groups. Uh, too many groups to mention. And uh, 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 Carol and, uh, and some of us got arrested with the Poor People's Campaign. Right on. Which is, uh, right on. Peace Action is important right now. Yeah. Right on, right on. I'm here, I'm here fighting for justice, right like on. we all are. Right on, right on. Come on, we need to create check. Come on. Kathy. Don't be so shy. Kathy Scarborough with, um, of course, the IUC and the Solidarity Singers, but also I come down from Middlesex County, so I'm with uh, the um, Central Jersey Coalition Against Endless War and the uh, Immigration Group Resist the Deportation Machine, and um, I'm here for peace and justice. For everyone. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on over. Good. Good. I'm Roseanne Pasquale, and I'm here for social justice, and I'm with the Solidarity Singers. You're our furthest traveler. Tell them how far you can. I live in Waretown, New Jersey, Southern Ocean County. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ed, come on over. Hi, Eric Romstead uh, with the North Jersey Democratic Socialists of America, the International Marxist Tendency, the Green Party, and the Solidarity Singers, of course. And glad to be here with folks from Newark against uh, police brutality and everything that's going on. All right, thank you. Next. Rumo Das Gupta from Freehold, New Jersey. I'm here for every right action, for everything that is just and fair against police brutality brutality against justice for immigrants, justice for the poor people. I'm also part of the Poor People's Campaign. Uh, I'm Ted Glick. I'm a member of POP, and I'm active with a number of groups that are fighting to shift away from fossil fuels to jobs creating wind and solar and renewable energy. I'm Tom Bias from Flanders, New Jersey. I'm the National Secretary of the Labor Fight Back Network and a member of the Industrial Union Council. Black Lives Matter. Because yeah. right Gene Rob said he didn't seem to want a cup of talk from Highland Park. My name is Ben Zorowski. I'm the Director of Disaggregation, member of NCAP and POP and numerous other organizations. I just want to mention, a lot of people mentioned peace action. This guy, Donald Trump, he's trying to get us out of nuclear treaties now that we need. We all got to start reuniting, reviving our activism against nuclear bombs. That's right. As well as against uh, police brutality. We're glad to be here on that. And against war, because he wants to get us into more wars when we're already bombing half the earth. Carol's the one here who's been arrested the most. <laughs> Been to jail for justice. Marianne, you want to say, I just want to say I was happy to see so many POP members uh, down in D.C. At, 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 for the march, Women's March Against the Pentagon because Carol and I were down there. And it was an amazing day, amazing action. So we got to keep fighting against those <laughs> those warmongers. <laughs> okay, um, do we have other representatives? Diana, Thank you. from the ACLU, come on up. We're done. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Today is a, an important day in the city of Newark. It's a day that we remember why we are here. It's a day that we remember all of the work that has been done calling for police reform in the city of Newark. In 2014, the United States Department of Justice issued a report detailing the pervasive abuses of power and rights violations committed by the Newark police. And it hasn't ended. Even to, to this day, even though we have a consent decree on paper that demands the police stop their abuses, change their policies, change their practices, we still hear reports from people documenting their problems, unable to file complete re co police complaints, unable to live their lives free from discrimination and abuse. And so we remember why we are here today. 
Across the state of New Jersey, we are in need of police reform. Even though we have changes that are being made here in the city of Newark, the problems with policing are not unique to this city. We know that we have, uh, we, we've seen Wyco in Wyckoff, police heads uh, endorse and explicitly advocate that their police force em embrace racial profiling. We've seen down in Trenton, officers counseling each other on how to beat people without lo leaving bruises. We see problems up and down the state. We see deaths left and right at the hands of police. In New Jersey, we have, there have been at least 60 people who have died in police encounters or in police custody. And this is unacceptable. And it's reason why we need independent prosecutors for when somebody dies at the hands of police or in police cu custody. These, these cases should not be left to, uh, to, to local county prosecutors who work day in and day out with their local police to prosecute their, their daily cases. Those cases need to be handled by the state attorney general's office, a more independent body, so that we can have assurances that our police aren't cooperating, uh, that our prosecutors aren't favoring, uh, so that our prosecute, so that we, so that community members know that prosecutors are not favoring their local police officers. In the city of Newark, the people have demanded civilian oversight of police. The people have made sure that. Civilian Complaint Review Board gets put into place in 2016. And even to this day, it is the people who still demand police reform, police oversight, and police accountability. This is not a bipartisan, this is not a, a partisan issue. Everyone deserves accountable policing. Everyone de deserves to be treated with respect, and everyone deserves constitutional policing free from discrimination. And so the ACLU stands in strong support of our partners at the People's Organization for Progress, Ironbound Community Corporation, Newark Communities for Accountable Policing, Newark Anti-Violence Coalition, 1199 SEIU, the NAACP. We stand for, firm with our partners in making sure that the people have a say in the policing that occurs in their city. And so we, 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 I thank you for coming out. I encourage you to, to stay vigilant, to stay strong, to keep, uh, keep the fight up, keep engaging your neighbors, your family, your friends, and tell them about this fight. This is a fight that's long in the making. This isn't new to Newark. It's not new to the state of New Jersey. It's not new to the history of the United States. And the fight will go on long after we are gone ourselves. And so thank you for coming out. And, uh, and keep up the good work, keep up the fight, keep up the struggle. All power to the people. All power to the people. James Harris, who was the president of the state NAACP and now is president of the New Jersey Black Educators Association. Giving praise and honor to the Almighty, thank you for coming out. The struggle continues. Those folks who say they are to serve and protect, how do you object to an organization that's designed to ensure fairness? The city council says we need a citizen civilian review board. The federal government says we need a civilian Police Review Board. Why then do we have people who are get paid with our salaries objecting to a system that would ensure justice and fairness? We have to raise the question as to what are those values? Who are these folks who are in uniforms who do not want a transparent, objective process to go forward? Why? Because the United States Justice Department did a thorough report and found that there were massive abuses of authority and improper procedures by the Newark police. It's documented. This is not new. But what we need to be concerned about is some of those Korea folks who were part of the reasons why that report came out are some of the same people who are objecting to a fair and honest, objective process. The Police Review Board is not about going out finding problems. It's about dealing with those situations when people believe that their rights have
have been violated. So why do we have a police department or a union that says we don't want to be investigated, we don't want the truth to come out because I believe there's a blue wall that protects those and we're calling upon those members of the police department who believe in justice and equality to stand opposed to these folks who do not want a fair and equal and just system in the city of Newark. I dare say that if we went to some of their communities and saw some of the things that are happening in Newark, that they would have a different attitude. But some of it has to do with who lives in Newark, who's been uh, arrested, and who has been abused by the Newark Police Department. Clearly, not all police officers are bad people. But we've seen enough patterns throughout this country, right here in New Jersey, over and over again. Not only are they not arrested, not only are they not indicted, but many of these abusive individuals go free. They go home safe when other people have the pain and suffering that's left over from abuse. So we call upon the FOP of Newark, New Jersey to get out of the way of justice and let justice prevail. We call upon their leadership at every level, the local level, the county level, the state level, and the national organization to embrace the recommendations in the Universal Police Report that came out of the Justice Department during the Obama administration that says that there are good practices that ought to be in place in all police departments all over this country. Newark should be no exception. We call upon all of our elected officials to stand with the recommendation that has been made and to have a voice. This is no time for silence. This is time for justice. And I appreciate everybody coming out. We must stick together. And of course, we're going to turn some of this around when? Yeah. November 6th. Right. There will be no reasons why we cannot reverse some of the things that are going on at a higher level. Right. When we know people are getting killed, there's evidence of murder and there's silence. We will not allow that to continue in the city of Newark. It has no place anywhere in the state of New Jersey or this country. So we will continue to push and we will continue to demand that the Newark FOP do the right thing and get out of the way of justice and have that suit eliminated. They may not give up. We're not going to give up. Justice will prevail. Power to the people. Power to the people. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. When do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. Peace to the power. Peace and power to everybody. Bring a friend. That's right. In addition to fighting for the subpoena of power, we are also remembering victims of police brutality and police terrorism. In New Jersey alone, there have been, oh, according to StolenLives.org, there have been over 278 individuals killed by the police. As part of this, we would like to bring up Brother Munir Muhammad to talk about one of the victims, innocent victims, of police terrorism. Come on, Brother Muhammad. Bring the picture. Bring Jerome's picture up here. Hello, everyone. Power to the people. We are here usually. This is our Justice Monday. And we down, usually stand down in front of the federal building down on Broad Street. But today we wanted to start out here in front of the FOP building to bring about a change and what we're doing in this struggle here. Uh, but Jerome Reed is my stepson. 
who was murdered by the police down in Bristol, New Jersey. Uh, the mother's not here because she's not feeling too well. Normally she would. Uh, we out here fighting for justice, not only for Jerome Reed, but for all the family of police brutality and they have not gotten the right justice that they deserve. We want everyone to know, we like everyone, more people to come out here and join us on Monday down in front of the federal building to show your support in South Dallas for these families, these victims that had their lives stolen. But not only for justice for those family members, but we fight for justice for our community, for fair housing, for free education. And the list goes on and on. Now, I don't know if there's any other family member that's out here that would like to also come up and say a few words. Because we, uh, like I said, we're not just here for Jerome because we all family. We're in the same situation. Nobody wants to bury their child. We usually go old and have our child bury us. But this thing with this blue wall has been up a long time. And I know that over the decades, over the centuries, many walls have been built, have been taken down. And it's not the same thing with this blue wall. It can come down to. We strive in a peaceful manner to seek out justice here in this country because we not only deserve it, it belongs to us as well as anyone else, be it in any color. Because all lives matter. And there must be accountability, transparency, to help these victims get through their daily lives. But I know we are not going to stop just there because the struggle goes on a long way. It takes one step at a time, but one of us, we can have a whole lot of steps going on making down this road. We are people that demand justice for all. All right, power to the people. I'm going to call our chairman. Come on up. Um, one of the things that a lot of times people don't understand is the trauma that these families are going through. If you look at some of these family members, they're sick and they're getting sicker, especially when they don't get any justice. So we need to continue to fight, Chairman. Stop police brutality! Stop police brutality! Stop police brutality! Stop police brutality! What do we want? When do we want it? What do we want? When do we want it? What do we want? When do we want it? No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. Abdul. 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 Jerome. 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 Kashad. 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 Radez. 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 No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. What do we want? Police Review Board, with what? Subpoena power. What do we want? Police Review Board, with what? What do we want? With what? Brothers and sisters, I want to thank you all for coming out today. Are you ready to march? You ready to march? Well, let's get in order and let's march. It's going to be a difficult march down Broad Street because of the electrical crisis and fire in Newark and the repair that's going on, it's had a major impact on the traffic. But we're going to march. We're going to march from here, the Fraternal Order Police, 
Lodge 12 to the federal building in North. I gather that the speakers who came before me already told you we are here in front of the Fraternal Order of Police, Newark Lodge 12, because this police union, together with the Supervisory Association, filed suit in State Superior Court to stop the implementation of the establishment of a police review board here in the city of Newark. The people of Newark have been demanding a police review board since 1966, over half a century. And in 2014, after the Justice Department came into Newark, conducted a three-year investigation, they found that the police were engaged in police brutality, that they were engaged in unconstitutional stops, that they were engaged in illegal activity. And as a result of that investigation, the police of Newark were put under a consent decree. This is an agreement by the city of Newark and the Justice Department that a number of reforms would be put in place to change the behavior of the Newark police. And one of the reforms mandated, mandated by the Justice Department was civilian oversight of the police. And that has manifested itself in Newark in the establishment of a police review board. We don't want just an oversight committee. We want a review board that has power to correct these rogue police behavior. And there has been police brutality here in the city of Newark. Don't let anybody tell you. We can tell you the names of the victims. You know about Eric Garner who was strangled to death? There was Warren Lee that was strangled to death on the corner of Vanderpool and Sherman. You know about police police shooting Oscar Grant? Well, they shot Shaquan Nance on the corner of Irvin Turner Boulevard and West Alpine Street in New Jersey. You hear about police killing unarmed civilians? Rashid Fuquan Moore was unarmed when he was sitting in the car with Richard Guy and was shot to death by police in the city of Newark. And throughout New Jersey, this is a problem. Jerome Reed, whose stepfather you just heard from, had his hands raised when he left the car surrendering to the police. He was shot at point blank range in the head by Officer Brahim Days and killed on the spot. Abdul Kamal in Irvington, was on Stanley Terrace with nothing. You heard about Amadou Diallo? Abdul Kamal had a cell phone in his hand. Amadou Diallo had a wallet in his hands. Abdul Kamal had a cell phone in his hands when he was shot 15 times by Irvington police. Kashad Ashford was unconscious in the car when Lyndhurst police and state troopers fired, shot him four times in the head. He was already unconscious. The Associated Press came out with a report earlier this year that in the last decade, there have been over 200 cases of police brutality adjudicated in the state of New Jersey. 19 involved homicide, nine involved sexual assault. So police brutality is not just a New York problem, a California problem, a Texas problem, or an Illinois problem. It's a national problem from coast to coast, and we demand an end to police brutality. We call upon the Fraternal Order of Police to withdraw their lawsuit. It's currently in appellate court. This police review board
have a fully staffed police review board. They have a review board with investigators. They have a review board with subpoena power. They have a review board with officers. And they take cases every year. If New York City can have a police review board with subpoena and investigative powers, then the city of Newark should have a police review board with subpoena and investigative power. We want justice. We will not settle for anything else. And that is why we're here today. So are you ready to march? Are you ready to march? Well, let's line up. Let's put the uh, this banner in front, followed by uh, the subpoena power uh, banner. Let's line up facing this street. What's the route? Are we going up? Uh, right. The rest of the speakers, we'll hear from them at the federal building. We want to get down Broad Street before it gets dark. So we'll hear the rest of the speakers uh, at the federal building. We need one person to carry uh, the stand. We're going to bring both speakers. So uh, Daniel, go ahead, uh, bake the line. Go up to that white line in the street right there, that broad white line. Everybody fall behind Daniel, and we're going to get on the good foot. Okay, great. Yes, we need somebody to carry speakers. Most people are still.